Hi everyone, so in today's video I just want to go through as many of the 2022 problem solving questions as possible. I don't want to make this video overly long so we'll just see how many we can get through. Another thing I want to mention is just based off the advice that I'm constantly going on about both on the Discord and on this channel is that it's really important for you guys to identify your weakness and then practice exactly those questions because as you know the TSA is incredibly repetitive. Now, I feel like that makes sense to a lot of you guys in theory, but you are struggling to put it into practice. So what I'm currently doing is I'm just collecting up all the questions and organizing them by question type. There's about, I think something like 15 different types of questions, actually maybe slightly more, but you'll see. Uh, so hopefully what that means is that you guys can then just go and click onto the first question. If that one makes sense to you and you can solve it in a minute or less, you move on to the next. If you're struggling with it, you would just do the other questions, which are basically identical. So I hope that helps. And uh, for now, let's just move straight into the questions. OK, so starting off with question 12. Now, one of the questions that I tend to get is basically when you are dealing with a problem solving question, how do you make sure that you're looking at the right bits of information? How do you know you're not missing out on anything? And obviously, this isn't a perfect strategy, but I find a pretty good way is just to start off with reading the question. That way you're kind of your brain is training itself to ignore any pieces of unnecessary information when you actually read through the content of it. It does save you a lot of time as well. So that's how I always go about it. So let's look at this example. So based upon my experience, by how many pence per day is my normal shampoo better value than the new brand? A very, very common question to ask you to find, uh, to basically give you overall prices for two products and then ask you to find unit prices or like per day, per whatever prices and then compare them. So pence per day. So when we start reading through the shampoo, I normally buy costs £1.96 for a 500 ml bottle. We know that that's not particularly useful information, that 500 ml bit and it lasts for 40 days. So already we can tell we need to basically divide through 196 by the 40 days to find a pence per day price. So we can just do that quickly first and find that it's 4.9 pence per day for the first bottle. Let's look at the next bottle. Last month I decided to try a new brand, 36 pence cheaper than this one. So it's gonna be one pound 60. Um, we don't care about the milliliters again. And in this case, it's 25 days that it lasts. I'm not even reading the middle bit because we know what it's generally gonna contain. So again, what you want to do is just basically uh, divide it through. So in this case, uh, six minus 150. So 6.4 pence per day for the other shampoo. And it's literally just what, which one is the better value one. So how much is a better value? This is a 1.5 pence difference, which is A. So try that. If you're struggling so far, then try reading the question first. Um, okay, in this question, this is a classic. They give you loads of information and you have to knock out one by one until you find, in this case, which cottage will Kate and Tech choose. So they give you a series of conditions and then you have to choose which one fits the requirements best. Now, again, super common question, very repetitive. I would say these ones, it's difficult to get wrong. The only thing that you want to avoid is uh, spending too long on this question. So just a quick tip for you. So first of all, go through and look at what all the different requirements are. So Kate and Tech, they want at least three bedrooms, a large garden, Wi-Fi, parking within three kilometers of a store. So uh, we're not looking at this column, basically. So we're looking at, and they haven't, uh, we're not looking at these two columns. They realise that it's unlikely that all wishes will be met, so they decided to compromise. They insist that the cottage must have at least three bedrooms, uh, but they will be happy if at least three of their other wishes are satisfied. So this one is essential, the bedrooms, and then everything else, we just need at least one of these three of the four options. If more than one cottage is suitable, they will choose the one that is the cheapest to rent. So in fact, we actually do care about this cost per week eventually. So just to make this kind of quicker to do. First of all, just cut out the one that you know can't be the case, which is obviously going to be Eggless here because it doesn't have the required number of bedrooms. Now you're left with four options, but when you think about, okay, which order should you look at these in? I would personally look at, because they're asking you to find the cheapest to rent of the conditions met. So rather than checking all four, just go in this order. So you start with this 461, then this 491, then this one, then this one. I know it's kind of a minimal amount of time saving, but over the course of an exam, when you are really up against it, then it can actually be super helpful. So um, starting with number one, the cheapest. So let's see if it meets at least three of the other requirements. 
So large garden, no. Um, Wi-Fi, yes. Parking, no. So already that one's knocked out. So we'll move on to beaches. Large garden, yes. Wi-Fi, yes. Parking, no. Within three kilometers, yes. So it's gonna be B. Okay, so getting repetitive here, but again, read the question first. So what is the value of the word Anna? Uh, and we're given a table here. In this case, we're showing that the value of the last three words are formed as such. And uh, it's just to make sure it is by adding because it looks like it's by adding, but just to make sure it can be zero and it can be adding, it's by adding the value of the letters shown. So, uh, I mean, the easiest ones to look at for this, uh, for this type of question is obviously where you've got uh, noon and moon because they are only one letter apart so the only difference is m so that difference there between these two totals is two which means that n must be worth two more than m so n equals m plus two if that is the case and we give um, a random value so we just assign m a value of one uh, in the case of moon it would be uh, n would have to be three M would be one and then that would leave OO being two, two. So this is how it would look. We can double check that it actually works with the word noon. So noon, it would be uh, an N here. So it'll be three, six, eight, 10. So it does actually work. So I'm pretty confident in this order of letters. We just have to now find the word letter A. So we can just look at moan. So we've got M one, O two, A X, and then N3, and that gives six, so A would be one. And then we just add it up. A is, there's two A's and two N's, so it'd just be eight. Okay, so uh, again, let's read the question first. How much money will Sean save by taking the cheaper option? Again, it's asking you to just compare two cases where there are two different potential prices and work out the difference. These ones, again, super easy. Just make sure you're reading the information really carefully. So he's taking his car to Sunny Island, lives 38 uh, miles away from the main uh, terminal. He has research, travel, whatever. Uh, ferry ticket is car and passenger is $80. And then alternatively, so we know this is the other option now. So it's either $80, oops. Uh, it's either, either $80 for option one. Or let's look at option two. Um, we would be looking at a plane ticket is $50 and the seaport company will transport his car port to port for $100. So the other option is uh, 50 plus 100 equals $150. Uh, fuel costs are 150 a mile. That doesn't really matter because either way he has to get himself to the terminal. So it's going to cost the same whichever option you choose. So it's literally just the difference between these two, which would be D. Okay, so question 19 um, is asking, who is the only volunteer on the rotor for Monday or Thursday that Faye could swap with if the conditions described above are still to be met? The conditions are given here. Um, so Faye wants to swap her Tuesday duty with one of the others to be on duty on Monday or Thursday. So Faye's here and she wants to trade either into that one or into that one. And the conditions are each volunteer has two evenings of duty, never two consecutive evenings no two volunteers on duty together. So they have to be on different days. So, I mean, this is again, super simple. Just um, uh, don't waste too much time on this kind of question. So we'll just go in order. So starting with Mel, if Faye were to swap with Mel, Mel works on either Monday or Thursday. So she has the opportunity to go to Monday or Thursday. If they swap here, is there any issue? Well, uh, not in terms of consecutive working, but Mel and Tim are working together here and Mel and Tim are working together here. So that's not gonna work. If they swap the other way, um, Mel would be consecutive. So Mel is out. Now Pat, Pat is only on Thursday and not Monday. So they have to swap from Thursday to Tuesday here. If Pat were to go on here, we're instead of Faye, so she would be with Eve and Tim, and Faye would be over here with Mel and Tim. Then the only other thing to check is the other day that Pat is on. Pat is on over here 
with Leo and Faye, those are different people. So Pat is uh, suitable for working, for swapping with Faye. As soon as you find the answer, don't bother reading the rest. It, with this kind of question, it's not difficult, but you have to save time because there'll be others that are a bit of a thinker. So you definitely don't wanna be wasting more time than necessary. Okay, so we've got a table that's being translated into a graph question here. And in this case, we're being asked to find a student that has a mark incorrectly plotted on a scatter graph. Now, again, this question's come up, I think, two or three times before. Um, if you don't know how to convert these marks into this kind of table, just let me quickly tell you. So it doesn't tell you what is on each axis. So we have two bits of data for each student. So we've got a starting mark and an end mark. So the starting mark could be the x-axis or it could be the y-axis. So all you want to do is just select a student and just check basically and see if it works. So let's start with Fion. We only want to focus on our five options, by the way. Look how many, look how many students there are here. We, we, we don't care about that, okay? We're looking for incorrectly plotted, so we can just check here against these others. So starting with Fion, if we start with Fion and we say, let's try this way for starting mark first, so x-axis for starting mark first, then we need one, two, three, four, five, six, and she's on 56 for the end mark, so one, two, three, four, five, and that is six. So that one could be correct. Let's look at it the other way to see if, she, to see if this table could be flipped. Um, so here we've got um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's no data point here. So if Fion is the incorrect one, then we're going to find out by looking at the others. So let's look at um, Gary. So Gary is uh, 48 to 50. So if he has to be the same direction as Fion, otherwise one of them is wrong, right? So we'll start here, go 10, 20, 30, 40, and about 48 and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. He should be here, he is not there, so Gary is incorrect. Okay, if each girl ran at a constant speed throughout the race and Iman's speed was 25% faster than Maya's, how many seconds did Iman run? For how many seconds did Iman run? So we're looking for two girls, Iman and Maya, they've run a race. Iman started two seconds after Maya, finished three seconds before her. So again, this is a super simple question. So we're just looking at Maya and Iman. And Iman has run a total of five seconds faster than Maya. And Iman was 25% faster. So five seconds is 25%. So just times that by four. So Iman must have been running for 20 seconds. Okay, what is the difference between... What is the difference between the highest and lowest average salaries of politicians in the countries listed above? So highest and lowest seems pretty simple. Let's look. Um, we've got the average salary of uh, selected salary of politicians here. And then as a multiple of GDP per person. OK, well, we don't need any of that. So just ignore that. We're just focused on the numbers here. And just note here that it is in thousands of dollars. Uh, so the highest is. Australia 201, oops, 201.2, and the lowest is Pakistan 3.5. So the difference between these two, roughly E. I mean, exactly E, I'm sure, but guessing because of the, without calculating it. Okay, what is the maximum, what is the maximum number of major prizes which could be won? Uh, so let's figure out how a major prize is won. Um, so a major prize is awarded for all tickets where the product of the three digits on the ticket drawn is eight. And minor prize, we don't care. So three digit numbers from 001 to 999. So eight is what we have to try and make. So that could either be that or that. It's three numbers. So it's either going to be one, one and eight. Uh, or it could be two, two, two. Or it's going to be some combination of one, two, four, basically. So obviously we can only have one of these, so that's one. Um, this, we've got two of the same number, so there's only going to be three options there. In this case, we've got three distinct numbers, so there's gonna be six separate solutions, combinations that we can make uh, with these ones. So it's gonna be six plus three plus one, so 10. And I, I would recommend just like kind of memorizing those little mini rules just to save you time in the exam and so that you can be certain without like writing all of these out. So just these little things that come up time and time again, don't solve in the exam. You don't want to waste time.
Okay, so we have a nice spatial looking one here. How many of the small cubes have one green face, one blue face, no red face? Uh, so let's see what we're looking at. So we've got one pair of opposite faces is red, uh, one pair of opposite is green, and one pair of opposite is blue. Okay, so we've just got dirt, 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 basically. Um, we're cutting into small cubes, which one have the one green, the one blue, but no red. So in this case, my orange is gonna be the red. So one green and one yellow. So we're basically looking at the edge pieces here, right? So we've got four edges that we could be looking at and you've got to take away the corners because they are all touching red. So it's just the three in the middle times four edges. See. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna leave it there with the problem solving questions for now. As I said, uh, I mean, I'm sure if you've been practicing these for long enough and you've looked through all the past papers, then I'm sure that this is all sounding very familiar to you. Same technique, same way of solving. As I said, not every problem solving question is made equal. Some are very easy and straightforward. Some are really complicated and it's like, what is this question? So don't waste time on the ones that you're used to. Just focus on the questions that you're spending too much time on, even though it should be straightforward. So obviously when you get in there, there's gonna be a couple of questions which just, even if you'd practice for it, you're still gonna struggle with. So it's more about reducing the time on questions that you really shouldn't be spending more than let's say 30 seconds on. Um, I hope that was helpful. Again, please leave any comments um, or any questions that you have uh, in the in the comment section, but also please look out for the organized questions, which I'll be uploading on Sunday.